Harry's Wife, Part 102.34 In God, Netflix and Spotify's Cash We Trust Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, continuing to utilise the prominent example of Harry's Wife so you understand precisely why she does as she does. I'm also utilising a series of articles written by Hilary Rose of the Times. Quite simply, she sees through Harry's wife, and not only is what she writes entertaining, but it also gives you further insight into the way that people see through Harry's wife's behaviour, what they think about it, and of course, how that would impact upon her. It is useful to witness such information. Accordingly, this article is a little bit older, going back a few weeks in relation to, of course, the archetypes pod crap and the one that involved Mariah Carey. But it's still fruitful to find out what Hilary Rose had to write. She states, Harry's wife meets Mariah Carey. But who's the big diva? The Duchess of Sussex's latest podcast is like a granite cliff face that will take you 46 minutes and 4 seconds to conquer. This is at least an improvement for which I am grateful on last week's 57 minutes and 28 seconds and gives me hope that by the end of the series we'll be down to a nifty two minutes of authentic, empowered, living your truth nonsense and we can all get on with your lives. You can see how the writer of the article de determines that what Harry's wife has to say is word salad tosh. This week, the Archetypes podcast was called So Help Me, the Duality of Diva with Mariah Carey. It could also have been called Harry's Wife. Why I'm definitely not a diva, but if I were it, would simply be a sign of how incredible I am. And if you don't believe me, you're probably British. The writer summing up, of course, the self-obsessed nature of Harry's wife and the way that she is dismissive about anybody that happens to disagree with her. If only we'd all agreed in advance that thanks to the miracle of language, one word can have different meanings and language evolves. Thus, in 2022, long after Harry's wife's researcher has discovered on Wikipedia the 19th century origins of the word diva, we find ourselves in a place where an epically talented, successful and glamorous woman can be celebrated as a diva, and a whinging woman with a famous husband can also be called a diva. Ouch. Who can possibly say which is Mariah and which is Harry's wife? Diva used to be a badge of honour, says Harry's wife in her best sorrowful voice. It still is when it comes to me, says Mariah cheerfully, talking about how she plays up to the whole diva image, thoroughly enjoys it, as she does the podcast, where, remember, nobody can see her wearing a slinky silk embroidered gown and vast quantities of canary diamonds. Hey, I'm MC, you can call me Mimi, she says, which is quite enough from you, Mariah, thank you very much. Now back to Harry's wife, again exhibiting the understanding of the way that this is, this podcast, is just simply a vehicle for Harry's wife to subconsciously pursue the prime aims. We learn that people only started talking about race when I started dating my husband, things really shifted, and that Harry's wife's hair is so thick and curly that her grandmother had trouble brushing it, and that in the 1990s she had platform shoes and butterfly clips. Have you had enough yet? You have? Pity. We are told several times that Harry's wife is much younger than Mariah, triangulation with age to assert control, and Mariah starts to describe her grim childhood, marred by domestic violence, which Harry's wife agrees is Maria's, Mariah's story to tell, and then tells it for her. Character trait acquisition, lack of boundary recognition, haughtiness. An academic with an improbable title pops up to talk about a woman, or a femme, or a minoritized person, and the ways to which someone who, through the excess of their performance of certain gender tropes, reveals the instability of gender 
and the ways in which self-invention is possible within a set of otherwise normative gendered constructs. And when I've worked out what that means, I'm sure I'll agree with Harry's wife that it's very enlightening. This also is demonstrative, of course, of the deluded nature of Harry's wife and her overall lack of intelligence, that an academic pops up with what is ostensibly a load of bollocks. But Harry's wife can't determine that. It sounds impressive, therefore she'll go along with it, because she thinks that she's cleverer than she actually is. She thinks that she's far brighter than she actually is. But of course, anybody can see that she's not. She regularly doesn't understand the wording, meaning of certain words, witness archetypes and stereotypes, guttural and visceral, amongst others. Returning to the article, coming up, she promises us a segment in which Mariah gets a little bit closer to a feeling of belonging, leans into the mic in full breathy confessional mode, by recognising something she can no longer be a part of. That turns out to be Mariah's first marriage, in which she was given rules and had to stick with them, and is definitely not an allusion to the beastly royal family with their tedious insistence on things such as protocol and turning up for banquets, honouring the American president even if you don't like him. The word diva means goddess in Latin, Harry's wife explains, which could be a dynamite conversation starter with an ancient Roman in a temple. And yet, Harry's wife says sadly, the meaning has gone from high class to high maintenance and used to tear a woman down, and it bothers her. I sympathise. If we cast our minds back to her wedding, all she was doing was making it very clear to the Queen exactly which tiara she wanted to wear, and precisely why the musty ambience of the medieval St George's Chapel would be improved by diptyque air freshener. Nothing at all, of course, with her being a diva. Things briefly luck up when Mariah tells Harry's wife she has some diva moments, which goes down like a lead balloon, so she backtracks swiftly. All she meant, it transpires, is that Harry's wife is beautiful and wears nice frocks, and that's like totally why she gets called a diva. We conclude with Harry's wife's astute summing up, which this week is, Oh man, I love it, she is so Mariah. Quite so. Last word to Harry's wife, obviously, who tells us that her faith is greater than her fear especially these past few years. What a brave soldier. In God, Netflix, and Spotify's cash, we trust. Again, a suitably scathing observation of Harry's wife's podcast, and sees it for what it is. Self-indulgent twaddle, which, as you all know, is subconsciously done to assert control over the listeners and those that comment upon it thereafter, to draw fuel from the responses, and to utilise it for the residual benefits of facade management and money, a further residual benefit. Naturally, Harry's wife is incapable of seeing how boring it is. Harry's wife is incapable of seeing how she always has to make it about her. Harry's wife is incapable of seeing how she comes across as foolish with the things that she says. What about the observations about this, though, below the line? Parker's Inc. tells us, Hillary's review is definitely the best way to, in inverted commas, enjoy Harry's wife's podcast. Huevos Rancheros tells us the best way is to mute. Harry's wife says it best when she says nothing at all. PB, please keep these reviews coming. They're brilliant. And on XX, Harry's wife keeps getting better and better. She's the best comedy out there at the moment. SC, I think Mariah backtracked when she worked out Harry's wife doesn't have a sense of humour about herself or much else, apparently. Seems she's just one of those with a permanent smile, with no idea what the joke is. It might just be her. Now, I have explained elsewhere with regard to the narcissist and the use of humour and a sense of humour, but there are certain narcissists that don't have a sense of humour. I do, but I use it as a weapon to enable me to get to the prime aims. Others of my kind also exhibit a sense of humour, utilising it also, of course, for the prime aims. But certain narcissists don't, and Harry's wife is one of them. She doesn't have a sense of humour. She is incapable of recognising jokes because her narcissism isn't geared up to do it. S. Lawson comments, Two multimillionaires arguing over how awful life has been. Still, Harry's wife has become so unhinged, she makes Mariah and her ludicrous life seem sane. Seems sane. Blake Seven. 
I read a Reddit thread today, mainly populated by Americans, who seemed to think that racism was at the heart of British attitudes to her. My contribution was to say that while that might be true for a small minority, I think most of us just think she's a grade-A gold digger. Somebody called Princess Harry's wife of Monty Shit Show writes, through our work with diverse communities and their environments, to shining a light on people and causes around the world, our focus will be on creating content that informs but also gives hope. As new parents, making inspirational family programming is also important to us as is powerful storytelling through a truthful and relatable lens. Jeez, give me a break. AM09, I can explain the hope and informs adjectives. Arch will inform people when their podcasts end so that they may hope to endure to the closing credits. Princess Harry's wife of Monte Shitcho again. Harry has forged a career from monetizing the intimate details of his own life while displaying an egregious level of narcissism. Harry's lack of self-awareness has become embarrassing. Yours truly, poor slob is actually being led by the nose. He's adrift in a strange country where he doesn't know the rules with no one familiar to relate to. Truly an object of pity. Zetlander. This torrent of drivel should delight Wills and Kate, except sadly Wills has still lost a friend and a brother. Generation X-Ray. To start with, I was appalled. Then I realised how much joy these weekly takedowns of this awful, awful podcast are providing me with. Keep it coming, Hillary. I, uh, Rose. Ms. Markle would be a divine, great comic writer of spoofs if she didn't actually believe every word she says as her honest-to-God own truth. So we have to, which is not a hardship, with the excellent Hillary Rose. John. Mad as a box of frogs. Poor Harry. Too dim to step off the tracks despite the thundering roar. Yours truly. Oh, poor Harry. Although not the brightest star in the firmament, even he must be cringing at what a complete arse his wife is making of herself. I say call a halt, except I'm enjoying myself too much. Jackie C. and Cohn. I think Hilary Rose is my new favourite journalist. Thank you for doing the listening and giving us all the best parts. Tiff, I'm amazed the podcast even exists. I would have thought that the collision of these two mega egos would have been equivalent to the Big Bang. A Dartford Warbler. Diva, a woman or celebrity who thinks they are very important and who is difficult to please. Spot on. A what? Thank goodness for Rebecca Vardy and Harry's wife, the gifts that keep on giving. Dave Javu. In an effort to ever increase her profile, for doing what, by the way, she's becoming more and more ridiculous. So the answer to the headline question is, who cares who the biggest diva is? Rusty Spanner. Mariah Carey is a wonderful singer. She makes the world a better place. Harry's wife doesn't. Catherine Gilda. So incredibly pretentious. Patrick Edwards, thanks. Your interpretation of this drivel is fantastic reading. David Tower, I think the key to being a good interviewer is a genuine interest in your guest and knowledge of their interests. Too many interviewers seem more interested in listening to their own voices rather than that of the guest. The triumph of ego over curiosity. John Hanna, how long before Netflix or whoever employs her makes her redundant? Lucrecia Largia, Harry's wife's ramblings of pure satire. These articles made by this writer are wonderful but hardly necessary to send this narcissist up. More comments in a similar vein. All these people delighting in the ridiculousness of Harry's wife's comments, how pretentious, how up herself she is, and how narcissistic they are. And yet, of course, she is completely incapable of seeing this herself. So many people see it, so many people lampoon and ridicule her, and she will just keep on going. That super slow-motion train wreck that she is. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.